All right. For tonight's episode of HD Before Bed, the Crash Course on Stars reading group, I'm going to be talking about Spica. But first, I have a special guest, Eve Ostara, who will be joining. Thank you for joining, Eve. Good evening. And uh, so what is this that, that you're presenting? So I was at the Santa Fe Public Library today, and they have this section of free materials and this was something that i found in the free materials section the saudi aramco world issue of arabic in the sky uh september october 2010 oh my word and would you look at that this is just yeah let me just let me get this a little closer for the folks at home this is what we've been talking about this is wonderful this is uh the the night sky and i mean i guess showing stars with arabic name and stars with non-arabic names but yeah i mean you can read it's really cool scholars have identified 210 visible stars that carry arabic names some of which preserve older names that date back to babylon and sumeria in this illustration, the 30 brightest stars with Arabic names appear as eight-pointed stars in sizes adjusted for their relative magnitudes or brightnesses. Right. So I see that is actually in this map, they've actually shown, um, they've actually adjusted. It's really cool. They've kind of, uh, yeah, there we go. You can kind of see um, the different sizes and really, I mean... Aldebaran, uh, Alhabor, oh, that's the name of Sirius, Akranar, Alnair, Rigelkent, Hadar, Vega, Deneb, Altair, all of these uh, 210 visible stars that carry Arabic names. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, get some of these awesome pictures. Good find. I know, right? Yeah. Thanks, Santa Fe Public <laughs> Library. Right. I mean, this is. Um, this is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice uh, here. I'm just really, really impressed. These um, great images and just what a cool text. Um, the Summer Triangle. Three stars with Arabic names dominate the late summer sky toward the east of the Northern Hemisphere. Vega, Deneb, and Altair. Each is part of a separate constellation, but due to their brightness, they appear linked together as the Summer Triangle. Blue-white Vega in the constellation Lyra, the, the lyre of Orpheus, or Lyra of Orpheus? I guess what he played, he played the lyre. Takes its name not from Spanish, but from the Arabic word for plunging, waki, as applied to an eagle swooping down. The ancient Egyptians, as well as the people of ancient India, also viewed this constellation as an eagle. Deneb, Arabic for tail, is the tail of the swan, Cygnus, and the brightest star in that constellation. Johann Baer called the star Arioth from al Ridif, which means the hindmost. Deneb is a blue-white supergiant, some 60,000 times more luminous than the sun. Altair means the flyer. It's the brightest star in Aquila, the eagle, and the 12th brightest in the sky. It's a dwarf star, just under 17 light years from Earth, one of the closest stars visible to the naked eye. Its name is short for Al Nasser Al Ter, the flying eagle. So, very, very cool stuff here. Um, thank you for letting me share this. Yeah, thank you for finding it. Thank Wonderful. You. Very, very cool. I can't wait to read this article and uh, just a nice little surprise. Um, so thank you for being a guest here and I uh, I hope to have you on again soon. And thanks for finding this awesome article on astronomy and uh, the Arabic names of the stars. Uh, it even says many of the Greek star figures were themselves borrowed from the myths of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very good stuff. All right. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you.
All right. And so to continue, we're going to take a look at Spica. And this is from Jan van den Berg's Crash Course in Stars, on uh, Stars, rather. And um, Spica, the first measuring point. And we see that in 1950, it was at 23 degrees Libra. And, uh, you know, you can see how, how slow this movement is. Um, it takes 70 years to, to go a degree, you know, roughly. 72 years here. We see at 24 Libra and then at 23 Libra, um, 72 years apart, really. And gate 32, line 4. It entered into gate 32, line 4 in the 2000s. So in Ra's view, everybody with their node in gate 32, line 4 will have to deal with the great dilemmas in the change of the cycle, 2027, because they are the ones that are most connected to the procession of the equinox and the movement of the cycles. In 3200 BCE in ancient Persia, Persia a temple was built orient, oriented on Spica, giving them the point in the sky to discover that the entire cosmos actually moves in a huge cycle. It says this huge thing is alive, and out of that we get global cycles. And then to think about that it's now in the 32nd gate. Is the change of the cycle going to be a failure? Uh, 32nd is uh, gate 32 is the fear of failure. Is the species going to die? Gate 32. The only thing which endures is change. Change with the deep tribal fear of failure, the fear of extinction. The deepest fear of gate 32 is the lack of creativity, of genius. And Spica, the star that initiated our awareness of the global cycles, is in gate 32 now. And again, remember, this is about advertising. This is the background field. They are the poster children. But we're on the edge, and all nine centered beings only lived with the dominating background frequency of the cross of planning. So this is a point that we became nine-centered beings in 1781. We, we evolved to this new form, but the cross of planning started in 1610. So what this is really saying is we have never, as nine-centered beings, experienced a different incarnation cross. We've only ever lived with the dominant background frequency of the cross of planning. And if you're familiar with the cross of planning, you'll know um, this is a mostly tribal and collective cross. This is 16 and 9, which are collective logic. And then this is 3740, which are tribal. And so it brought a real um, trust of the collective to take care of us. It brought a trust of the tribe to take care of us. Uh, as Jan writes, it brought us a certain reasonable trust that the children will have teachers in their schools, that the garbage will be picked up, that the trains run on time, that every morning there's fresh bread in the supermarket. And the nine center didn't experience, we haven't experienced the cycle change since we emerged in 1781. And all of those that are in the Spica st stellar family will quiver in that moment. Continuity doesn't seem to make sense anymore. If the stellar family teaches us anything is that even the gods, the remotest forces in the stream are concerned about the generations and the movement of information. The human design system directs us to the aligning with our own authority. While everywhere we look, we're controlled. And the control mechanisms aren't the bad guys. It's just the way it works. No bow bowing down to anything. Hear your own authority. Human design is about hearing, using many sensors. 32nd gate is the school. If you can't teach the young, then indeed the tribe will perish. The species will become extinct. The gift of the voice is that it seems the only nine-centered education that exists, meaning you know, Ra's encounter with the voice. Everything else doesn't seem to work. And then here is a question to Ra. We're talking here about natal positions of stars. Do transiting stars in the nodes also have influence during that transit? Ra answered, I assume that everything has an influence. So yes, it would have its influence. However, a birth marker is worth being looked after first. This is all new ground, but yes, most certainly there are impacts. 
And then we see Spica's movement in time. In 1913, it entered the third line of gate 32, the lack of continuity. In 1979, it entered the fourth line, right is might, uh, the instinct to maintain one's principles in times of change. And so it's in the fourth line now. And yeah, we can see that uh, anyone born with gate 32, line four, uh, particularly if they have Jupiter or Saturn in that position, is going to be very in touch with the, the star Spica because they were born during a conjunction uh, with that planet and Spica. And as we saw previously, when the planet of that line is in its exaltation or detriment is when the star's influence is most profound. And we see that it uh, remains in line four until 2047, when it moves into line five, which is about flexibility and adaptation to circumstances, which we can imagine will be very necessary in 2047. Here we see Spica in Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, uh, nearby Arcturus, uh, in the constellation of Virgo, in the constellation of Boots, the Herdsman. And there's Spica in this image here, uh, in the bushel of wheat in the hand of Virgo. All right, let's let's uh, let's call it for today. Next time we'll come back and we will look at Vega. Thank you so much for watching. I'm uh, really enjoying doing these HD Before Bed series. And thank you to Jan van Denberg for the excellent crash course on stars. Till next time.